All right, let's get started. Um, so today we are talking about the divergence and the integral test. Um, any questions so far? Yes, sir. Uh, number 54. 54? Okay. So this is a choose your own test situation. So number 54, we have the sum k going from 1 to infinity of 2 to the k plus 3 to the k divided by 4 to the k. All right. Now, here's a question for you. What if the 3 to the k weren't there? What would you think? It would, but it would also be like 2 over 4 raised to the k power, which should signal like it's geometric. So it's something raised to the k. But what this one is, is I could split this up, this thing I could rewrite. This is k going from 1 to infinity of 2 to the k divided by 4 to the k plus 3 to the k divided by 4 to the k. Right? I could split it this way. Now, since all of these are positive numbers, I could rearrange them if I wanted to, and I could say it's the sum of all of these guys plus the sum of all of these guys. So I could write this as the sum, k going from 1 to infinity, of 2 over 4, as opposed to the k, plus the sum, k going from 1 to infinity, of 3 over 4 to the k. Each of those is a geometric series. Of course, this is a half also. but So on this one, my a is 1 half. And my R is also one half, correct? On this one, my A is three fourths, and my R is also three fourths. So this is equal to A over one minus R. A is a half over one minus a half, plus A over one minus R, so it's three fourths over one minus three fourths. So we get, this is one half divided by one half, which is one. And then this is three fourths divided by one fourth, which is three. So we have, does that make sense? Yeah. So it converges. And in fact, we even know what it converges to. Converges. Does that make sense to everybody? Other questions? Yeah. 20. Number 20. 20 says, okay, sum k going from 1 to infinity of e to the k over 1 plus e to the 2k. Uh, 20 equals 1 k going from 1 to infinity of e to the k over 1 plus e to the 2k, correct? Okay, so my strategy here is going to be the integral test because I, and how do you know, this is a really good question. When do you know to use the integral test, like in general? Well, it's not, it, it's not super scientific, but it's like, could I take the integral of it? And if I see something like 2 to the x plus 3 to the x over 4 to the x, do I want to take its antiderivative? 
No. Uh, well, no. <laughs> it's the easy answer. Over here, though, if I had e to the x over 1 plus e to the 2x, it's kind of like, I think I actually have a strategy for that. I could use substitute for e to the x. So what I want to do is look at the integral from 1 to infinity of e to the x over 1 plus e to the x squared, which is e to the 2x, right? dx. And the question is, do you think you could do this integral? And I'm saying, I think I could. I think I could use substitute for e to the x. So if u was e to the x, then du would be e to the x dx, which is the top. So now I could rewrite this integral as, by the way, I'm not right now taking the limit as b goes to infinity. But I'm just going to hold the infinity there and be careful. Okay, so I understand that that's what's really going on. But I'm going to hold the infinity and just know that, yeah, it's a limit. Okay, so right now I'm going to say this is the integral of du is the top. And the bottom is 1 plus u squared. And now my new limits of integration. If x is 1, u is e. And if x is infinity, e to the infinity is also infinity. So I'll just say to infinity. Of course, now I do know the antiderivative. This is tan inverse of u evaluated from e to infinity. And so now I get like tan inverse of infinity. And of course, we know it's not actually tan inverse of infinity, it's tan inverse as x goes to infinity. But what is tan inverse of going to infinity? What's that? Not pi. Pi over 2. Yeah, pi over 2. So we get pi over 2. And then if I plug in e, I get tan inverse of e. So minus tan inverse of e. Uh, but, okay, here's the thing. I'm not exactly sure off the top of my head what tan inverse of E is, but the truth of it is I don't care because I got a number, right? And what all that I was really trying to figure out is does this thing converge? I don't actually care what the number is for this because this just helps me to test if this sum converges. So if this integral converges, then this sum has to converge, and vice versa. So I figured out that this integral does converge. So that means that this guy, so I could say therefore, three little dot triangles means therefore, the sum, k going from 1 to infinity of e to the k divided by 1 plus e to the 2k, converges by the integral test. And something to get used to now is to always say why it converges. It's not enough to just say, hey, it converges. I mean, at the end of the day, you got a 50-50 shot, right? It's like, does this thing diverge or converge? So you need to tell me not only if it converges or diverges, but what was the method you used to get that? So I'll always say something like, this sum converges by whatever test I used. And in this case, it was the integral test. Does that answer your question? Yeah. see what you're saying. So you said, okay, let me write this over on the side. You were looking at the integral one to infinity 
of this is e to the x over one plus e to the two x and you kind of left it that way right dx and then you said well if i put a two here and then i put a one half here maybe something nice will happen it almost does but something's wrong the derivative of the bottom is what well, the derivative of one is zero. What's the derivative of e to the two x? Oh, yeah. It's two e to the two x. Yeah. yeah. So you, if this was a two right here, that would be perfect. And in fact, that's probably the way you need to do it. But since it's just an x, it doesn't. So that's the yeah, that's the mistake. Other questions. See, somebody said one on line. Uh, somebody said 52. Let's see. Okay, so I've got integral k going from 1 to infinity of k over the square root of k squared plus 1. Okay. So this was 52 integral k going from 1 to infinity of k over square root k squared plus 1. Was it cube root or square root? Let's see, 52, oh, that's wrong. I'm doing 53. Oops. Well, somebody asked for 53 on here as well. So let's just go with it. Then I'll go back to 52. Okay. So the first thing I look at here is I could take, I actually see two different ways I could do this. Is this the one you were talking about or no? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it is, yeah. Because I look at it right off and I see, the divergence test will work, the integral test will work. So it's really up to you which one you choose because they kind of say it's up to you. So which way do we want to go? I personally like to go with the divergence test whenever I think there's a chance that the limit of the A series, which is what this is, this is summing the A's. But you can also just ask, does this as a sequence go somewhere? And what the divergence test tells us is, if this thing goes to anything other than zero, then the sum of all those diverges. And it kind of makes sense, right? Because like, let's say you added up a bunch of ones and you said one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one, what does that add up to? Infinity, right? Clearly that gets bigger than any number. Or if you did a half plus 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 a half, that diverges. So if you're getting close to some number like a half and you're adding a bunch of halves together or very close, it's infinity. So if you're, the number that you're getting close to here is not zero, it certainly gets humongous or negative humongous, right? So what we're going to test is where does just, where does the sequence go, not the series? And that's really important here. And I probably talk about this in my lectures too, is you have to understand the difference between the sequence and the series. The sequence is just the numbers that you're putting in to add it together to get the series. So what I'm saying is what's the limit as K goes to infinity, not of the series, but of the sequence. But this is one of the problems that we did in the last sections when we were just looking at sequences. So I could top, divide top and bottom by k, and I get the limit as k goes to infinity. Of if I divide the top by k, I get 1. If I divide the bottom by k, I could put the k inside the square root and get k squared plus 1 over k squared, or the limit as k goes to infinity of 1 over the square root of, if I split this into two fractions, I get 1 plus 1 over k squared. And now as k goes to infinity, this guy goes to 0, and I get 1, which is notably not 0. 
And that's what I'm looking for with the divergence test, is I'm just trying to see these numbers, are they getting close to zero or are they not getting close to zero? If they're not getting close to zero, the thing diverges. That's why it's called the divergence test. So I can say, therefore, the sum k going from one to infinity of k over the square root of k squared plus one diverges by the divergence test. And we're done. Does that make sense to everybody? So what I like to do as I'm kind of getting better and better at uh, sequence, sys, and series, and series in particular, figuring out if series converge or diverge, is I almost like to, and you might even write this for yourself, make a flow chart. Say, I'm going to test this first. And I think that the optimal thing to test first is, does it diverge by the divergence test? And if the answer is it does, wonderful, it diverges. If you get zero in the divergence test, like let's say I would have gotten zero, then I'm like, the divergence test failed. So let's try some other test. So then you have to decide what are you going to test next, depending on some different factors. But make yourself a flow chart and then remember it. So it makes it so much easier if you kind of have a process for testing uh, infinite series instead of just like, eh, I don't know, how about, how about the integral test? It's like, well, I think we can be a little bit more scientific than that. And we're going to learn more and more tests. So, uh, but always what I would recommend is first ask yourself, does it just diverge by the divergence test? The other thing that's really important to remember is just because it goes to, let's say you have something that goes to zero, like this is like the classic mistake with the divergence test is you have something like this, sum k going from one to infinity of one over k. If I did the divergence test, then I'd look at the limit as k goes to infinity of 1 over k. And what is that? Zero. And so here's where people make a mistake. They say, okay, so that means that this sum converges by the divergence test. Nothing ever converges by the divergence test. Because the divergence test only tests for divergence. Does that make sense to everybody? You, you should never say those words. It's kind of like you should always be aware of things that make your professor very angry. And this is one of them for me, is that never say something converges by the divergence test. It will never happen. Okay. And in fact, what happens to this sum? What, what was this one called? Harmonic series. What does it add up to? Infinity. It it uh, it actually diverges. So it, the limit does go to zero, but it still diverges. So just because the limit goes to zero doesn't mean that the series doesn't diverge. It just means we didn't catch it with the divergence test. Does that make sense to everybody? So if your, uh, the divergence test gives you something other than zero, you diverge. But just because you get a zero doesn't mean you converge. It just means you still need to do some work. Does that make sense? Okay, somebody asked about number 52. So let me do that one as well. So 52, we have sum k going from zero to infinity of 10 over k squared plus nine. So 52, oh, this was 53, sorry. 
52 was the sum k going from 0 to infinity of k over, was it k squared plus 9? Does that seem right? Oh, no, it's 10 over k squared plus 9. All right, this looks a lot like a, kind of like what I would take the antiderivative of to get tan inverse. It's not quite right, but it's close. So what I'd like to do is let's use the integral test. So I consider this integral, integral from zero to infinity of 10 over x squared plus nine dx. By the way, a good rule of thumb, we don't usually use like n's and k's inside of integrals. We use x's, right? So when I convert from my sum to my integral, I usually change the k or the n, as depending on the problem, to an x. So I understand that now I'm using a continuous variable, or here I was using a discrete variable, if that makes sense. Okay, so how do I do this one? Uh, well, the 10 could come out. I just have 10 integral zero to infinity of one over x squared plus nine dx. And what's the antiderivative of one over x squared plus nine? Anybody know? I believe that would be one third tan inverse of x over three. Uh, and then we need to evaluate that from zero to infinity. Okay, uh, so I have 10 thirds times, if I plug in the infinity, I get infinity, tan inverse of infinity, pi over two minus, plug in zero, I get tan inverse of zero. What is tan inverse of zero? I believe it is zero. I think tangent of zero is zero, right? Because it's sine over cosine. Sine of zero is zero, so tangent of zero is zero. So it's zero. I don't really care because right now I see I get a number. So this thing converges. So the integral converges, which means that the infinite series converges. So I can say, therefore, sum k going from 0 to infinity of 10 over k squared plus 9 uh, converges by the integral test. No, we're done. I usually give a little bit of a like mini lecture to everyone about infinite series. Typically, the exam over infinite series is the lowest average exam in calculus two. And I don't say that to be frightening. I say that because there's a reason and you can avoid it. And that is that like how many of do you, are there anybody in here that really likes board games? Okay, a few, okay, good. I'm the guy in my family that everybody, we get a new board game and then they make me learn it first, right? They like say, go read the rule book and then teach us all how to play because we're not gonna read the rule book, okay? It's like, okay. And I actually kind of enjoy it, so it's okay. But I, get, I take the rule book and I go read it and then I come back and I say, okay, here's how it goes. So you do this, you do this, da, 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 da. We play the game. What happens? I win. What, why do I win? Well, people kind of make excuses at the end of the game, right? They say things like, well, you knew the rules and we didn't know the rules as well. So you won 
because you knew the rules. And I'm like, yeah, you made me read it. And it's like, I learned the rules so I knew how to play better. That's true. And that is probably why I won in some sense. But it's the same with Infinite Series, actually, is the people who win at Infinite Series are the people who know the rules. If you know your rules really, really well about, like, how does this all work? then you usually do really, really well on this exam, even to the point of the third exam being trivially easy. If you really know your rules. If you don't know the rules of the game, the game is very, very difficult. Okay, so my, the best advice I can give you going into the third exam is know the rules of the game very well. And as we learn new uh, rules, Make sure you know all of the rules that we have learned and have them in your head at any time very quickly. So really, we don't have that many rules yet. Basically, we have something can be a geometric series. So I should look for a repeated factor in each term, right? So you got geometric. The second thing we've kind of seen is a telescoping sum right, where things cancel out and you're left with something very nice and small, and then you let in go to infinity and you get something. So you could look out for those things. The third thing we've seen is the divergence test. And it's like, okay, in the divergence test, I test the limit of the sequence, not the series, to figure out if the series diverges. Then the other thing we have right now is I could change the series over to an integral, test to see if this integral converges or diverges, and the series will do the same. Um, and that's all we've got so far. But we're going to add to it. We'll have the comparison test. We'll have the limit comparison test. We'll have the root test. We'll have the ratio test. We'll have the like uh, absolute convergence test. So we'll have some different tests that we need to be able to use. And we've got to know what we're talking about. If you don't know what you're talking about, like it's just like sitting down to play a very complicated war game and you don't know the rules. It's like, this seems impossible. Yeah, it is because you don't know what you're doing. So 95% of the battle in this exam is just understanding what you're doing. The problems, once you understand what you're doing, are trivially easy. Okay, uh, so just keep that in mind when you're studying that it's all about the rules. It's not actually about the computations. In fact, most of these computations, like look at what I'm writing here. This is like three short lines and I'm done. Over here, like, two short lines, I'm done. These don't take up like massive amount of space, but you have to know what to do. Does that make sense? So that's my big piece of advice for you today. And as we keep adding on different tests to how we figure out if an infinite series converges or diverges, you have to know the rules of the game really well. And so as we pick up more and more tests, Make sure you're getting the rules. Any other questions? Yes. Uh-huh. A trig substitution should work, but you'll do a ton of work and then you'll just get tan inverse. That's what should happen, is you should do a lot of work and then just get this. Okay, <laughs> well, did you insert a, uh, like this should be tangent? Three tan theta? Yeah, it should work, so you made a mistake. Any other questions? Do 
22. Yeah. Okay. Twenty-two. Could you read it to me? It's sum k going from one to infinity of like to one over k ln k. Is it squared? Yeah. Oh, two. Yeah. Like this. Sure. So this one, they even tell you it's integral test, right? So you know that you need to use the integral test. So you want to take the integral from two to infinity of one over x times ln x squared dx, correct? So let's look at this and see if this converges or diverges. Well, here, if I let u be ln of x, then what's du? So one over x dx, which is kind of all the other stuff, right? So what we would end up with is this is the integral of uh, the 1 over x dx becomes my du. And then I've got a u squared on the bottom. And then we're going from, let's see, ln of 2 to ln of infinity is still infinity. So to infinity. So this is u to the minus 2. So the antiderivative of u to the minus 2 is u to the minus 1 divided by negative 1. So negative u to the negative 1. Okay, so this is equal to negative u to the negative 1 evaluated from ln of 2 to infinity. I think it's probably helpful to just write it the right way. Like this, right? Negative 1 over u. Okay, but now if I plug in infinity, I get 1 over infinity, which is kind of like 0, minus negative 1 over ln of 2, correct? And at the end of the day, all that I care about here is this is just some number, which means it converges. So the integral converges and thus the infinite series converges. So I can say, therefore, sum k going from two to infinity of one over k times ln k squared converges by the integral test. Sound good? Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't want to spoil all of these problems. Yes. Um, so you're just leaving infinity and the integral and get the bounds. Yes. Are we going to get in trouble on like a test? No. Homework? No. As long as you keep in mind what you're doing. So I, I think even when we were doing it, I was kind of telling you that, like, in practice, I might hold that infinity in there, but I understand that if I run into L'Hopital's rule and I get infinity over infinity when I plug it in, I should probably switch over to the limit. But as long as I just plug things in and everything's wonderful and I get something like zero, then I'm like, eh, it's fine. So I would say that now that we know how to do improper integrals, I'm okay with you leaving an infinity in there but you need to know what you're talking about. So it's not so much about what you write, it's about what you understand. And if you understand that when I'm doing this, I'm actually taking the limit as b goes to infinity of negative b to the negative one, and that just happens to be zero, that's fine. Then you don't have to take the limit every time. Obviously in the section that we're learning about that, we probably should use the limit just to understand. But now I'm fine with you just doing it this way.
Any other questions? All right, that is a good place to stop then. I'll let you kind of work out the rest of them. And so this section is due tonight, and I believe that we talked about comparison tests on Friday. So I will see some of you then. Have a good day.